Good evening, everyone that's uh, joining us. Uh, it's good to, uh, to be with you and to continue our study in the book of Isaiah. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Our Father, we thank you that uh, we can come together through technology to study your word. And Lord, I, I pray that you would just uh, guide us as we continue to explore the book of Isaiah and tonight as we talk about how you reign. We thank you for blessing us and giving us this time together. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Past few weeks, as I mentioned, we've been uh, studying the book of Isaiah, and to tonight uh, our lesson is on God reigns, and um, the focus is going to be on an ancient city called Tyre, T-Y-R-E, and uh, Tyre goes back 3,000 years before Christ, and today uh, in the, to the north of Israel is located in the small country of Lebanon is the city of Tyre, and it was the leading city of Phoenicia the great maritime power of the ancient world. And because Tyre was such an important harbor and center for shipping, Tyre was synonymous with commerce and materialism. Tyre was the Babylon of the sea. Tyre was the symbol of wealth, the peak of the world economy in its day. And for the most part, it ruled the economic world with pride and godlessness. Tyre was known for the worship of the god Baal. In short, scripture has nothing positive to say about Baal. Tyre was, get it while you can. Tyre was, whoever dies with the most toys wins. Tyre was keeping up with the Joneses. Tyre was bigger is better. Tyre was human worth measured by the content of a bank account and not the content of the heart. And so in Isaiah 23 verses 1 through 7, Isaiah the prophet predicted the fall of Tyre and the loss of its wealth around 580 B.C. And so we begin our study this evening in Isaiah 23, 8. And the first section of our lesson is about God is just. And so Isaiah says in verse 8, Who planned this against Tyre? The bestower of crowns, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are renowned in the earth. Tyre was a city where money ruled. The merchants were princes, and the traders were the honorable of the earth at that time. To be a leader or honorable, one didn't need to be of royal heritage, a good or an honest man. The only thing needed was success in business. Because of its great success, Tyre had become proud and full of self-glory. For a moment, let's imagine a modern-day equivalent, New York City. Very few people today would believe a 21st century prophet who proclaimed New York City would soon be left in ruins. New York, we know, is well established. Huge in size, the most populous city in the U.S. with 8,336,000 people distributed over 303 square miles. There are 20 million people in its metropolitan statistical area. 
New York City has been described as the cultural, financial, and media capital of the world. Imagine what would happen if the entire city of New York was to fall. There would be major implications for the world as a whole. Stock markets would crash, major transportation routes would be snarled, and we can get a small taste of this when we think of what happened on 9-11-2001. Magnify that level of destruction to the whole city of New York. And we have what Isaiah said, what, what Isaiah was predicting for the ancient world when he predicted the fall of Tyre. If we go back to the beginning of this first verse, Isaiah asked the question, who planned this against Tyre? The answer is provided in verse 9. It hardly needs to be stated. Only God could do such a thing. So in verse 9, Isaiah says, the Lord of armies, or the Lord of hosts, has purposed or planned it to desecrate all its glorious beauty, to disgrace all the honored ones of the earth. So in this verse, Isaiah removes all doubt about who would orchestrate the fall of Tyre. Notice that Isaiah adds the description of armies to show that God is in charge of all of the armies of the world. <clears throat> because of its great success, Tyre had become haughty, self-reliant, proud, and full of self-glory. But the Lord of armies, the verse says, has purposed to judge and humble Tyre for their failure to recognize the true source of their wealth and power. And that was God. So Isaiah announces it here in this verse. Pride is that basic sin to which God is ever opposed and man is ever expressing. This furnished the reason the Lord of armies brought the overthrow of Tyre, their arrogance stemming from the city's prestige. They were foolish to rely on human glory. Even though they were honorable men, they were filled up with pride. Their pride was offensive to God because they did not give God any of the credit for their success. They were puffed up with self-pride. God allows this to happen to them to cause them to realize where their strength comes from. This example stands out, not just for them, but for all who hear of it. Pride goeth before a fall. Now let's move to Isaiah 23.10. And Isaiah says, overthrow, overflow through your land or pass through your land like the river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. Now one commentary I read said, tarry no longer in your own territories, but flee through them into other countries for safety and relief. O Tyrians, flee away as I advise you, for your city is un unable to defend you. If you have been reading our headlines in recent weeks, we are seeing people across our country fleeing from cities like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, LA, and Portland. Why? Because they no longer feel safe. 
even in our next door city of Memphis, people are not feeling safe. Let's go back to the end of verse 10, where it says, there is no more strength. Another, another interpretation of those words was there is no longer any safe harbor. Imagine waking up feeling unsafe in your own home and neighborhood and having to flee. In Isaiah 23, 11 through 12, he says, He, God, stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord has given a command, a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, You will rejoice no more. O oh, you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon, arise, cross over to Cyprus. There also you will have no rest. In these verses, Isaiah brings God back into the limelight. And the picture we see in these words is God stretching, stretching his hand over the sea demonstrating his power and control. He is the master of the sea. In his song, Hallelujah, sung by Andre Crouch, he says, demons tremble at the sound of that name. Here in these verses, the kingdoms tremble. In these verses also, our Lord says, Canaan is to be destroyed. And he is referencing Tyre. The fall of Tyre would cause the surrounding nations to realize that there is nothing on earth that can be trusted to last. In verse 12, Isaiah refers to an oppressed virgin daughter who will not celebrate anymore. And Tyre is being called a virgin because of her beauty, her pride, and her lasciviousness. For Tyre was never touched nor afflicted before. Passover to Cyprus in that verse, Isaiah says, with a keen irony, the prophet gives a counsel which he declares will be of no avail. They may flee to Cyprus, but the power of the Assyrians would reach them even there. In other words, Tyre is facing oppressed times. Let me pause here and pose some questions for thought. In what ways have you put your trust in the structures and institutions of your life. Have you ever considered that God in his justice might destroy our city or home country one day? We are witnessing firsthand cities being destroyed by people upset, possessed of Satan. In what ways does this motivate you with respect to your faith in God? I hope you are praying every day to God, for God, to intervene in the evil we are witnessing in our own country. I hope you are building your relationship with our triune God every day. Now let's move to Isaiah 13 through 14. And in this section, we find God is active. Look at the land, Isaiah says. Look at the land of the Chaldeans, a people who no longer exist. Assyria destined it for desert creatures. 
They set up its towers, stripped its palaces, and they made it a ruin. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, because your fortress is destroyed. If you were living in a city about to be besieged, what would be your first thought? Probably, how do I escape? In these two verses, Isaiah is telling the citizens of Tyre to look back at the Chaldeans and see what happened to them. They no longer existed. The phrase, whale ships of Tarshish, brings this full circle. Remember, I said at the beginning, Isaiah predicted the fall of Tyre, and his words are found in Isaiah 23.1. Isaiah addresses the ships as if they were alive, they were a metaphor for the loss of the port and the trade of Tyre. And he says, How with grief, you sailors out on the ocean, the city you relied on, Tyre, has been destroyed. Tyre had been a fortress with tall walls. It would not stand against the judgment of God. And then in verses 15 and 16, God is honored. And Isaiah says these words, Now it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten 70 years according to the days of one king. At the end of 70 years, it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. Take a harp, go about the city, you forgotten harlot. Make sweet melody, sing many songs that you may be remembered. God's judgments are so precise that he decrees the exact number of years that Tyre will be forgotten. In this period of history, Many kings did not make it to age 70. The number 70 was sometimes used to express the ideal expected lifespan of the time. The key, the key idea here is that Tyre would receive full justice from God and their punishment would be in accordance with her crimes. Quoting what may have been a well-known song, well-known song in this day, Isaiah makes the point that at the end of the 70 years appointed by God, Tyre will be remembered again. Remember, Tyre was the New York City of its day. And here God is prophesying of its defeat. Though it would survive, it would be brought into line with God's purpose for Israel. He depicts the commercial merchandising system of this heathen city as harlotry. And then in verses 17 and 18, Isaiah says, At the end of the 70 years, the Lord will restore Tyre, and she will go back into business, prostituting herself with all the kingdoms of the world throughout the earth. But, but, her profits and wages will be dedicated to the Lord. They will not be stored or saved for her profit will go to those who live in the Lord's presence to provide them with ample food and sacred clothing. God will allow Tyre, symbolized by a prostitute, to continue her gross materialism with all the kingdoms of the world, 
but her gain and her pay will be set apart for the Lord. Ultimately, the riches Tyre so desperate, desperately sought will be given to the Lord anyway. Wow. Many commentators think this refers to the presence of Christianity in Tyre in the days of the early church. Well, praise God. Tyre has learned their lesson. Their profits from their trade are not used for their own greed now. They have dedicated their work to the Lord. They will have their needs taken care of, but their excess will go to God's work. Her profits and wages will be holiness to the Lord. This means that even their transactions in daily business are dedicated to the Lord. We have sure knowledge from God that everything that exalts itself against God won't last forever. Either it will humble itself or it will be humbled. Either it will serve the Lord or it will pass away. God may give ungodliness a long leash, but it has a length and an end. I know by now you are asking, how can this help us today? We must realize from this that without God, we are bound to fail. With Christ, I can do all things. When we carry on our day-to-day -day lives selfishly, seeking gain for only ourselves, we are headed for its destruction. Remember, God is in control. And those who trust in God should not trust in wealth or power as a source of security. And I'd like to close with this from Psalm 135, 5. For I know that the Lord is great, and our Lord is above all gods. Throughout the pages of the Bible, this basic truth is mentioned many times. God reigns supreme. There are 19 verses in the Bible about God reigning forever. And the writer of this psalm shows that God has the power to do whatever he pleases. He controls the weather, performs miracles, overthrows kings, and gives the lands of the earth to people of his choosing. God also declares that he controls the future. So it is no wonder that the first commandment tells us to have no other gods before the true God. To worship anything other than the true God is foolishness because everything was made by him. God's power and perfect character mean we should rely, deeply respect, honor, and worship him. So as Christians, knowing that we are on the side of Almighty God. We should encourage and strengthen us when we find ourselves in difficult situations. Eliot pointed this out in his sermon this past Sunday. And I close with these words from Dwight L. Moody, who says, We are all going to immigrate in a very little while to a country that is very far away, a grand and glorious world where God reigns.